we're going to be looking at uh, PR Boom, PR Boom Plus, actually. It's uh, one of the many versions, open source versions, of the Doom code. If you remember Doom from uh, the mid 90s, one of the best games ever. Uh, has been open source for a long time, and many people have taken their own take on it. PR Boom is one of the more populars. Should probably be in your repositories for your distro. I'm running Debian, so if you're on a Debian or Debian-based system, you'll, this tutorial will work for you. If not, um, the first few things, basically getting stuff installed, might be slightly different. First thing we need to do is there are some tools you need installed. One, you'll need a compiler. I'm using GCC, so make sure GCC is installed, but you'll also want... Um, some libraries you need. Now, I don't know if this is all the libraries, but you'll want these libraries listed here. I'm going to put notes, a link to some notes in the description. Uh, so look in the description of this video for a link to uh, uh, notes with pretty much everything we're going to be doing today and plus some. Uh, so these libraries, you're going to want make and you're going to want a Doom uh, WAD file. I have my CDs that I've had for 20 years of all the games, so I have the WAD files. Um, even though Doom the code is free and open source. The WAD file, the WAD file is, contains all the art, uh, all the sounds, all the levels. That sort of stuff is not free, but there is the shareware version, and it is in the repositories for Doom and most Doom or most. Uh, it's on the repositories for Debian and most Debian-based uh, distros. So go ahead and use Aptitude or Aptget if you're on something like Ubuntu, and install these packages right here. Uh, if you have the Doom WADs, uh, do those you know, put those on your system as well. Um, I have all the WADs from the original games installed, so mine defaults to Doom 2. So when you start the game, it may look different. You can also install PR Boom, you know, sudo apt get uh, install PR Boom. And uh, I think maybe when you install that, it might try to install uh, the either the shareware WAD or there's also Free Doom, which is a free and open source WAD file. So I would suggest installing PR Boom from your repositories first. Make sure it all works. After that, you should be good. Next, we can download the source code for PR Boom Plus, uh, which is up on SourceForge. This is the URL here. Again, check out the notes in the description for that so you can get that because I know it's kind of long. So I downloaded that. Uh, next, I'm going to untar it. So I'm just copying and pasting stuff from my notes instead of typing them out. So tar, uh, untar, and unzip that file. Next, we can move into our PR Boom folder. So here we are. Let me clear this out. List. So here are our files. And next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to configure this for our system. So forward slash configure, uh, and that will... We'll hit enter. That's this script that came with the source code. We'll hit enter. And this will take a few seconds. Luckily, you only have to configure it the first time. And next, we're going to type make. Again, we installed make. It was the first thing we did in this tutorial. It was one of the files we installed, one of the programs we installed. And the first time you run make, it's going to take a little bit longer than it will in times after that, because it's going to make all the files for the game and that are needed and it's basically taking everything from source and making objects and libraries and, and, and compiling it all where after this when we make changes um, it's not going to have to recompile all those although you can using uh, make clean or just delete the folder and start from scratch so yeah this particular compile right here is going to take the longest but when it's done which it just finished uh, we can now play PR Boom that we just compiled uh, the Binary is inside the source folder, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dot slash uh, src to get into that folder, uh, say that I'm running from that folder, and PR Boom Plus. Hit enter, and there we go again. I have Doom 2, because uh, that's the WAD that I have, and it defaults to that even if you have Doom 1 installed. So, let's go and see if we can change uh, some of the game. We're going to edit the source code here. So I'm going to say vim and go into that source folder. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit a file called d underscore. And I'm using the English version, so english.h. And here are most our messages from the game. So like when you pick up an item or when you're at the menus, there's going to be certain messages. And here they all are. And uh, they're all defined at the top here as different variables. So 
You just find the message that you want and you can modify it. So let's go ahead and have a quick look here. Uh, let's go ahead and modify uh, the one that says right here for nightmare mode. So we're defining nightmare mode. So we're creating a variable called nightmare mode. Now when you see these little backslashes like this, that basically means the next line is basically like being on the same line. So all this is defining one variable, and you could write that all on one line, but they put it on multiple lines to make it easier to read. So that's why this backslash is here. These backslash ends inside the quotes are saying new line. If you've done any type of program, you probably know that already. And here we're actually using a variable within this variable. So uh, this is when you go to choose nightmare mode. If you're familiar with Doom, you choose nightmare mode, which is the hardest level, which is extremely hard. It asks you, are you sure this skill level isn't even remotely fair. So that's written on two lines and then there's a two line break and then it's going to display another message called press YN, which is uh, this variable up here. There's a few times in the game where it asks you to press yes or no, Y or N. And so instead of typing this out each time, they define it in a variable at the beginning of the game. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this message. Instead of saying, are you sure? I'm going to say, are you crazy? And just to show you, I'm writing that in all capitals. Uh, in Doom, these messages are always capitalized, so it doesn't matter whether you type it uppercase or lowercase here, it's going to display uppercase in the game. Um, and so we're saying, are you crazy? And we'll save this. And we'll just run make again. And you'll see it doesn't take nearly as long this time. There we go. Now, again, I can run... A PR boom plus and now if I come in here choose new and go down to nightmare mode it says are you crazy so our message took effect let's go ahead and quit out of this and go back into and by the way I'm using Vim as my text editor I should have said that earlier you can use any text editor that you prefer I just like Vim as long as it's a text editor and not a word processor you should be fine uh, so let's see what other messages are here? I want to change the one for when you pick up some health. So right here, uh, pick up health bonus. So when I pick up a little blue health bonus, up in the top left of my screen, it should display picked up health bonus. What I'm going to say here is, I'm just going to change this message altogether. I'm just going to say, very cool, exclamation mark. So I'll save that, type make. It'll recompile it, and I will run the game, and now, if I run past these guys, there's some blue health bonuses down at the end of this corridor, and if I go pick one up, look at the top left of my screen, it says very cool each time I pick one up. So that is how you change messages. Pretty much um, all your messages, at least for English version, is in this file and there's other files for different languages I haven't really messed with that um, but yeah you can change you see they're all just set as variables here's the message for when you beat when you exit uh, episode 2 that's the message that's displayed uh, also again the code is good for you know uh, doom 1 doom 2 so make sure you get the right message for your right game uh, but that is where you can change most of your messages next you're gonna look at changing some sounds um, so, if I vim, again, it's my source folder, sounds.h, you can see here, there's this file, and there's your music is defined here, and then here we're also down past that. Um, these are all your sound effects. Sound effects all start with SFX, and then uh, the name of that sound effects, that's how they define them. Uh, so, this is uh, where they're defined and they're getting those from the WAD package, um, but that's not where they're used, that's just where they're, they're defined. So what I can do here is I can now, uh, well, let's go back into there and say, I'm gonna just search for pistol, and right here we can see this is what the pistol sound, when you shoot the little bang bang gun, the little handgun, the pistol, that's the, what its sound is called. I can use grep, a tool to search through files, I'm going to grep for that uh, from all the files in my source folder. 
So I can do that. I can see all the different times that that sound effect is called. And if I scroll through here, I can see one called menu.c. Menu.c is where most of your menu stuff is defined. And when you're in Doom, so let me go ahead and just run Doom here. When I choose an option here, listen, uh, let me turn my volume up. So let me turn it back down now. When I choose one of those, you can hear that gunshot. So let's go ahead and go into that menu file. So vim source menu, or was it M menu? And uh, it was the, um, let's scroll up and find out. Can I scroll up? I don't remember if it was the header file or if it was, well, I'll just grep again. So grep for that and it's the C file. So vim, or whatever your text editor is, source, m underscore menu, c, and in here, I've already done this in my vim jump to the last place I was, but in this particular case, it's on line uh, 5,544 for the menus. Um, and in here, I can change this to a different sound. So you can go back to the file we were just in, look at different list of sounds and change it. I'm just getting from my notes here that the teleporter sound, when you go through a teleporter, is telept. So I'm going to save that. And when I recompile and turn my volume back up and start Doom again, now, instead of hearing a gun sound when I click this, we hear the teleporter sound. So again, oh, options crashed the game. Okay, go back in here. So we're getting the teleporter sound instead of um, the, the shotgun sound, or the pistol sound. Not sure why the game crashed again there. Interesting. Uh, but that is how you can change which sounds are played at different times. Uh, you can look through the list of sounds, which you can actually grep by doing this. So, so grep for SFX underscore all the sounds in the header file. And it'll give you a list of what all the sounds are called. And then they're pretty clear. I mean, this is shotgun, cocking the shotgun, you know, plasma, BFG, chainsaw up is the sound of the chainsaws that's coming up. Uh, idle, chainsaw, you know, hit, and so most of these are pretty straightforward, so you find the one you want, and then you can grep through the files and find where they are used. So that's changing sounds. Uh, let's actually now go and change how, some of the things about the player. So, clear the screen, I'm going to go vim, and I'm going to say uh, plus one, two, three, zero. What that's saying is jump to line 1,230 because uh, I've already I already know where this is at least in this version of the source code and I'm going to get that from the uh, info.c file and this is where objects are defined you can see right here at this part it says object things defined and so all your objects your player your bad guys the zombie the shotgun men the cyber demon the health packs are all defined here um, and so right here is the settings, at least the default settings for when the game starts for empty player, that's for the player. So we can change stuff for the player in here. For example, uh, we can change down here, let's change, oh, and also I want to mention, be important in future tutorials, each object has its own number. The player is negative one. Uh, for example, here, Possessed, which I believe is the basic zombies, they're 3,004. So if you wanted to create a new object, you got to give it its own unique uh, number. But we'll talk about that more in the future. Uh, so here, we're just defining stuff again about the player. One of the things that we can change in here, uh, you know, you can change, they're all labeled, uh, the radius and height. So if you make it, uh, make this a higher number, you might be able to not be able to walk down hallways because you're going to hit the ceiling. Uh, and right here, we're going to change some of this stuff, these flags. So the player is solid. We can remove that. Shootable. Drop off, I believe, means when you walk off a ledge, you don't just keep floating. Gravity actually will pull you down. Uh, the pickup, I think we can pick up items. If we remove that, I don't think we'll be able to pick up items. 
And it says not in deathmatch. I'm assuming that there's a different type of player for deathmatch. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change it. So I'm going to remove this MF shootable. Save that. Make the file. Rerun Doom. And go in here. And now that I'm not shootable, the bad guys aren't going to attack me. They'll see me. They'll go roar when they see me, but they're not. They're going to ignore me because I'm not shootable. You hear them do that? I can even shoot them. They're just going to ignore me. And this is true for all the bad guys. They actually turn their backs to me. <laughs> it's actually kind of weird. It's like they're like I'm ignoring you. I think they all just turn. I guess that would be probably be west. If we're looking at the map, yeah, or sorry, east. So. Yeah, so I'm not shootable now, so they're all going to ignore me, even if I'm shooting them. So that's that's one thing you can change. I'm actually going to go back in and um, put that back in, because I want to be shootable for future stuff. So MF underscore shoot a ball. So yeah, that's how you can make yourself shootable. Now, we can change our initial health, too, uh, if we... Vim into another file, and I'm going to jump to line 62 of this file uh, in our source folder, and this one's called p inter c. And here are some settings for our player as well as well as other things. So I can change our initial health here. I can change this to 555. Five, five. So when I start the game. My initial health will be 555. Five, five. Um, so I'm going to save that. Type make to make that. Run Doom again. And now when I go in, you can see my health is at 555. Five, five. And you can make that number much bigger if you want, but anything over three digits is going to run off the side. So if I set it to 1,000, uh, it actually would start off, it would look like 000. zero, zero until I got shot once and then it would drop down to 900 something. But you'll notice, I just want to point this out, that we didn't change our max health. So we're good, we're running around. It's like if I can't, see I, I can't pick up this health pack because that health pack is set to not allow you to pick it up if your health is over 100. But the little blue vials of health in the game always allow you to accumulate one health over 100 up to 200, which is uh, set as a max for that. Uh, so if I actually go to grab one of those, pardon me, kill these guys, okay, I can go and oh, all of a sudden my health drops to 200, and that's because of the function for those vials say don't let it go over 200, so that's something you would have to change somewhere else. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to stop for today's tutorial. And just showing you where stuff is and how you might be able to modify it to make the game more fun. We're going to get to a lot more fun things in future tutorials. Next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change and create your own cheat codes in the game. For example, a regular cheat code is IDKFA. And you can see I just got all the keys, all ammo, uh, and all the weapons. My health went to 200, my ammo went up to 400, and my armor went up to 200. So I just got all those things by typing IDKFA. And it says, very happy ammo added as the message. So we're going to learn how to create our own cheat codes so we can type whatever we want and have it do different things in the game. That's what we're going to learn next time. And in the future we're going to learn how to create or at least modify um, the weapons in the game. Uh, one of the things I like doing is taking the double barrel shotgun and making it as fast as the chain gun. That's a fun thing to do. So I hope you look forward to the next tutorial next week. I hope you're enjoying this, learning how to look through a rather large project and um, modify it to make the project do cool things. So, uh, as always, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description, as well as a link in the description to uh, notes on what we just did. Everything I did is in those notes, as well as... Uh, some added stuff that we're going to go over in future. So if you want to get a head start on next week's stuff, go ahead and look at my notes and you'll be able to see that. I right, thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day.
Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day. tutorials. Uh, even if you're not interested in Doom, this is hopefully giving you an overview of how you can modify source code and later on we're going to get into um, uh, using hex editors to modify binaries of files. Um, but it's also just fun. Doom is a great game and I'm going to show you today how to create cheat codes. Again, this is part two. Be sure to watch the previous video. Hopefully there's a link in this video to the full playlist. So go ahead and check that out because we've already installed the stuff we need to um, compile the game. We've actually already downloaded the source code, compiled it, and have made some changes. But today, again, we're going to be looking at cheat codes. Again, I'm using Vim as my text editor. Use whatever text editor you prefer for editing. Just make sure it's a text editor and not a word editor. Um, so, inside our source folder, there is a file called m underscore cheat dot c, which is where your cheat codes and their functions are stored. So let's go ahead and just have a quick look at this. So, back up to the top. Here, we're including some header files, not gonna really worry about those. But um, here, we're defining all of our cheat functions. So we're we're creating them, but we're not we're not actually uh, writing out the code for the functions yet because we want to have that because next down here. So for example, you know, there's a function called cheat god, uh, cheat choppers, uh, cheat must for changing the music, KFA, no clipping for walking through walls. Um, so those are we're defining the functions without creating them yet. Here, uh, we're going to create a little array of um, of the cheats. So we're saying we're calling a function called cheat. This is what you type to to get that cheat function to happen. It's the name of that function. Um, and I'm not really sure what always and never are, but we're not going to modify that anyway. The next thing is the actual function, which we defined up here, but we'll create below that. And that's why we had to define them up here, because if we create them after this, you would get to this point in the code and it would go, ah, we don't know what function this is. It doesn't exist. You haven't created it yet. So the main things we want to look at is what you type, what it's called, and what the function's called. So for example, uh, IDKFA is the happy ammos and keys. It gives you all the keys, all the weapons, all the ammos. I think it bumps your armor up to the full, and I think it might even give you full life too. So that function is called cheat KFA. If we come up here, cheat KFA is right here. And if we just search downward, we'll find a function called cheat KFA. So here, this function actually is calling two other functions and it's also displaying a message. So in this particular file, when you see PLYR uh, PL 
pointing to message, and then this, this is a variable, and if you remember last tutorial we looked at the folder where, or the file where a lot of strings are contained, this is a string that's defined, uh, you can actually type the string right there or use a variable. So, for example, uh, before we get into the other functions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go into the game, and I'm going to type in IDKFA. And you can see up the top left of the corner it says, very happy ammo added. That's the message that's displayed there. And you can also see I've got all the keys and ammo and armor and all that stuff. You see my health is at 555 five, five, because we changed that in the last tutorial. So let me go back in here. So again, we can find where this string is defined. Like so, I can say grep for that string uh, in our source folder, look at all the files. So right here, you can see that it's defined in that file that we were talking about last episode, last video. So I can come in here and search for that. Oops, let me go back out. It's called that. So I can come in here, search for that if I haven't already passed it. There it is. And it says very happy ammo added. So I can say very nice, or whatever I want. So going back into our cheat code, so it's calling that variable, and that variable just is defined in another file. So I can say make now, and once it's done compiling, I can come in here, start the game, and if I type in IDKFA, and you look at the top left of the screen, it says, very nice. So that's one way you can do that, by changing the value of the variable. But if I go back into the cheat here, I can also put the string directly in here. It's always good to use variables, because if you want to change it, especially if that's used, that string's used in more than one place, um, variables are good, plus it's nice to have all your messages defined in that one file. But uh, you can change the message just like up here, they used a string. We can use a string too. I'll say ammo, ammo, happy. <laughs> and I can make that. And then I can go into here. And if I type in IDKFA, it says ammo, ammo, happy. So you can do either. You can, you can change the variable or the string itself. Next, let's go back into our cheat codes here. And again, this is calling two other uh, functions. Um, so let's go ahead and look for this function. So I'm just going to go and search for that. It's defined there. It's called there, right there. TNT, KA. I'm not familiar with that cheat. I don't know if that's an original cheat or something added. That was added in 98, according to the comments there. Um, so that uh, that isn't from the original game um, but here it looks like only prints message if last key added however overview oh so that's that's a key it looks like it's giving you all the keys so again our KFA function is calling a function called K and that gives you all the keys so you have a cheat code that will give you all the keys you also have a cheat code that will give you all the weapons and ammo so instead of redefining all that in this function here they're just calling the functions they already created. Since this function does what two other functions do, but you still might want to do those functions separately. I hope that makes sense. So that is that. Let's create our own cheat code now. So first thing we need to do is define a function for our cheat code. So let's come up here. Let's go to the bottom of this list. And I'm going to say static void, and again, it doesn't have to be called cheat something, it's just nice to define everything similarly. And I'll just call this my awesome cheat. So cheat awesome. So we're defining the function, but we haven't actually created it yet. Next, we're gonna to wanna to come in here and I'll just, I'm just gonna copy and paste the line instead of typing all this out. And I'm going to have it just so when you type the word awesome in the game, awesome in the game, we're going to call this the awesome cheat and we're going to come over here and tell it to run the function 
awesome, which we've defined but not created. So now let's go down here where all the cheat code functions start or wherever you want to put it. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say static void and we called it cheat, oops, cheat awesome. And, oh, actually, let me think about this. Awesome. Yep. And next we're going to go here, here. So our function is going to go between these brackets here. So now I'm going to say hmm, PLR, PLYR, saying player. And we're going to point it to the player's health. And we're going to say the player's health is equal to. So whatever the player's health is currently at, it's going to change to 2%. And then we're going to say, let's change the players, or to the player, we're going to display a message. And we're going to say, you're so awesome again it doesn't matter what the case sensitive because it's all going to be capitalized in the game new line and i'm going to say i think you can beat the uh, i don't want it to be too long that's why i put this on another line but i'll say this game or this just this, this this with i'm trying to keep it short two percent health so we're saying you know we're setting their, their health to 2%. And then we're going to display a message saying, you're so awesome, I think you can beat this game with 2% health. That's the awesome cheat. It's actually kind of the reverse of a cheat. So I'm going to say make, and I'm going to run Doom. And I'm going to go in here, and now at any time, if I type in awesome, if I type it properly, oh, oh. okay. Okay, I must have typed something wrong in the code. Oh, no, there we go. I was just typing awesome wrong. You're so awesome. I think you beat the game with 2% health. And it put our health to 2%. You can see my face is all bloody there. Let's go ahead and add something else to that just to make it so it does that. But anytime you get hurt, we should play a sound that you're getting hurt. So I'm going to say S. And we're going to say start sound. And now this is case sensitive. And we're going to say 0, comma. And the sound of someone getting hurt, or the player getting hurt, which, if you look at the list, if you look from the previous video I did, they're all inside that uh, the header file, the uh, sounds.h file, and they all start with uh, SFX, and I have it written down that the player pain sound is PL pain, although you can play whatever, uh, play whatever sound you want from that list, or create your own, but you have to add it to a WAD file. Uh, don't forget your semicolon there at the end. So now we save that, compile it, and run the game. And we turn my volume up. And now if I type awesome, it displays the message, sets their health to 2%, and plays that sound of them getting hurt. So that is... It crashed because I tried changing the volume while I was in the game like that. Okay, so yeah, that's creating a cheat. So again, it's the mcheat.c uh, file. You want to define it and then set up what you want the cheat code to be, since such as awesome. Call it whatever you want. And then here, you know, say what function you want to run. So I could even... You know, if I come in here and I say change this to God, like the line below it, which normally is ID DQD, and that would run the God mode function. Uh, if I put that up here, now if I type awesome, it will run that same function. So you can also flip these all around. You know, if you want to mess with someone, they try to type in one cheat code, it runs a different cheat code, or sets their life to 2%. So now that I've done that, if I uh, make the game and I run the game and now if I type in awesome I'm in God mode instead 
Uh, so that is creating a cheat code. Next week, we're going to look at creating or modifying the current weapons. So if you want to make take a weapon that's already there and make it a bit cooler, that's what we're going to do next week. So I hope you're enjoying this. Again, it's just to give you a look at, you know, maybe you've been afraid to look at the code of a large project because you think it's going to just be too much because there is a lot of source code in a game like this from the original game and then all the modifications people have added to it. But hopefully you're getting an idea of how things work, how things uh, are possibly defined, uh, maybe how to search through and find what you're looking for. Grep is a very great tool for this. And just also just having fun with Doom, which is a game that I love. I still play fairly regularly, and it's always fun to modify. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Filmswitechris.com, that's Chris the K, should be a link in the description. Also in the description, notes to everything we did last week and this week, and some notes for next week as well. So if you want to get ahead of the game, you can start looking at that. And I just thank you for watching and hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to FilmsByChris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night, we work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's alright. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day. This video is the third in a series. Hopefully there's an annotation on the screen that will bring you to the full playlist. There's also a link in the description to notes on everything that we're doing. So just to review, I've deleted the folder that we were working on just to start from scratch because we've made lots of change to the code. But these are a few things you want to have GCC installed as well as these things. And if you go to compile it and it says you're missing a library, search your repositories for that library and install it, but uh, on my system these are all I had to install, but that doesn't mean that I didn't already have libraries installed from another project that it needed. Also, you'll, you'll need a WAD file, the shareware WAD file, whoops, the shareware WAD file is in the repositories for Debian and Debian-based systems, and PR Boom, it doesn't hurt to install the game from the repositories, make sure it works first before you start going with the code. So, once you have those things installed, uh, next you'll want to download the source code, it's on SourceForge. Again, this is in the link in the description to the notes. We'll untar that. We'll move into the PR Boom folder. Uh, next, we'll do configure. And it will configure it for my system. And we will also type in make. And the initial make takes a little longer than all the makes after that because it has a lot more to make. So today, once this is done uh, making our initial make, we're going to go in and we're going to take, we're going to make a rapid fire shotgun. And so basically, we're going to make the shotgun shoot as fast as the, um, basically the Gatlin gun, the, the machine gun. So, so it'll be that fast, but with a spray of bullets instead of a single bullet each time. Uh, and the way we're going to do this is by modifying the animation frames 
that it uses. So let's go ahead and I'm going to clear the screen here. Again, I'm using Vim as my text editor. Use whatever text editor you prefer. Uh, just make sure it's not a word editor um, or word processor. You want it to be a text editor. Um, I'm using Vim. I'm jumping straight to line uh, 129 of this file in our source folder called info.c because that's where we need to be. And right here, this is this is all the animations for all our different weapons. So you can see right here, we start with our shotgun. There's a little bit of a notes here. It's, you know, the shotgun, the shotgun moving up, the shotgun moving down. Um, so what we want to do is modify some of these numbers so that it skips frames. So here we want to go to this line right here. And we're going to change this so the these this column right here that um, my cursor's on that's the delay how long each of those uh, frames are up on the screen for so if we change those for most of these we're going to say one one so higher the number the slower the animation so I've changed them all to that so now I can do that. I can say make. I can go and run PR boom, which would have been faster to type at this point. There we go. And I'm going to type in a cheat code IDKFA to get all my weapons. I'm going to bring up the shotgun. Oh, that's the double barrel. I want the single barrel. And look how fast I'm shooting now. It's not quite as fast as a chain gun, but you can see it's quite a bit faster. So let's go ahead and modify it a little bit more. So let's go back into our source code here. And we're going to change a few more things. We're going to come down here to, um, let me check my notes because I don't have all of this memorized. Uh, but we want to change most of these. Yes. Oops, I'll do that. We're going to change this to zero, 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 zero. Let's go ahead and make that. If I did that properly and run that, IDKFA three. Three. There we go. So we set those animation for all those frames to zero. So basically, it's just skipping over all the frames of it, you know, basically cocking the gun. So that is uh, modifying the shotgun into a rapid fire shotgun. Now, you might say, well, I'm going to run out of ammo really fast. I mean, I have max ammo right now because I did the ID, uh, IDKFA cheat. But you're still going to run out of ammo pretty fast. So why don't we modify the code and change how much ammo we have or that we can get as well. So now I'm going to use Vim plus 84 to jump to line 84 of the file inside our source folder called p int uh, enter C and right here we have our max ammo clips and how much the ammo clips are worth so um, I have to remember I want to say I have to remember the order of our ammo here but really why don't we just set them all to 9 hundred nine hundred <laughs> So one of these in this little array here, it's in probably in this order. This is probably your bullets for your pistol and your machine gun. I'm going to guess this is probably shotgun shells, rockets, and plasma. Um, and so let's go ahead and just save that, make that, run that, go into the game. And now if I type in IDKFA, 
you can see my ammo is 900, 900, uh, 998. And so now if I go to my shotgun here, I'm good because I've got plenty of ammo. I never have to let off the trigger. So, if you're going to increase the rate of your weapon, you might want to increase the rate of your ammo, or the amount of your ammo. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I love this game. <laughs> I'm just getting sidetracked by the game. Um, so, now that we have created uh, our own shotgun here, why don't we uh, create some landmines? So, let's go ahead, and I'm going to use Vim. And I'm going to jump to this line 2,129 inside info, uh, info.c. And here, again, inside this file is where all our items are, are labeled, uh, are defined. And here you can see that rockets are defined. So these are all the settings for rockets. And as you can see right here, this is speed. Now, it's doing a math here, frac unit. Uh, which is defined somewhere else, but basically if we set this number really low The item the rocket will move very slow now you might think oh, I'll set that to zero and that will keep it in one place But I've noticed well, let's just do that. Let's say it's a zero. So we're multiplying zero times wherever the frac unit is Let's go make and let's run doom IDKFA Five for rocket Look, so I'm placing these rockets, but you notice they're not exploding because I guess, and I haven't looked at the code exactly for this, but rockets uh, have to have some sort of movement for them or they won't explode. So what we can do here is go back into our source code here. Instead of zero, we can set it to 0.1. Uh, you could probably go even slower if you wanted. So now that we've done that, we've compiled it, we can go into the game, type in my cheat code to get all my weapons, bring up the rocket, and I can shoot that right there. So I can set basically little landmines so I can make up a little barricade. So they are moving, as you can see, extremely slow. So it's kind of like placing landmines. Luckily, I don't think your rockets hurt yourself, unless someone else blows them up. They won't blow up when you touch them. So I can place a whole lot there and just wait for him to come and boom. So I can go, uh, let's see, let's go in here and drop that down, drop that down. And I'm going to just say, come and get me guys. If they don't kill each other first. There we go. So yeah, that's how you kind of can make landmines. Very, they will, they are moving, but they're basically landmines. And again, I did point zero. You might be able to do a lower number, maybe point zero zero. I'm sorry, I did point one. You could probably do point zero zero one, and they might even move slower. I haven't really tried that. I thought this was slow enough. So that's how you can make landmines uh, using your rocket launcher in Doom by editing the source code to change their speed. So. Um, yeah, and you can probably do the same thing with a plasma rifle or a BFG, although BFG would be kind of weird, um, but you could do it. Um, on the other note, let's go back into our source code here. And uh, so 20 was what it was before. Let's say it's 50. I haven't tried this. So <laughs> let's see what happens. It's always fun just to change the, the numeric values of variables and see what happens. IDKFA. Now, so yeah, it's probably flying a little bit faster. Let's make it a bigger number. Let's set it to 100, so it should be twice that speed. We'll make that, and we'll run that. IDKFA, IDKFA. Yeah, I think it's moving faster. So uh, let's just have fun, let's set it really high. This could, this could end badly. <laughs> Luckily, it's not a real rocket launcher. So make that, run that, 
FA. Again, I don't know what that frac number is. It's oh, it's moving so fast now. I don't even see it. It's moving so fast that it's not even detecting when it's hitting some. Well, it hit that guy back there. But it's moving so fast, it's, it's probably jumping such a distance with each frame that it's passing by people. So, yeah, the only reason I hit that guy is because I hit that wall there. So it's going so fast now, I can't even see it. So, I don't know, you can create a game and say, oh yeah, this is a, a weapon, you have a magical weapon that you can make things explode off in the distance or something. So, yeah, changing numbers like that. So that's another option for customizing weapons. So I'm going to stop there for this tutorial. I hope that you're enjoying this series on modifying uh, the source code of Doom, but hopefully it encourages you to look at the source code uh, for other projects. Uh, again, it's fun. Uh, if you ever just want to, especially games, go in. If you find where variables are set, changing the value of these variables can, um, can have fun effects. Um, and again, uh, the speed of pretty much everything in the game is defined by, the, by those frac units. So if you go and change the value of that, you're going to change the value of the speed of everything in the game, which can be um, interesting. <laughs> so, as always, I thank you for watching. Uh, please check out filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. There's also a link in the description to my notes on this project. So you can click on that. You can see everything we did today, uh, as well as the previous weeks. And there's a few other notes in there. So go ahead, check that out. Have fun. I hope that you're enjoying this series. I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's alright. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day. This is part four in a series, hopefully there's an annotation on the screen that will bring you to the full playlist. I recommend watching the previous videos. I have wiped out all the changes we've made and, in, and downloaded the fresh codes for working with, the, with the, the original source code from the PR Boom Plus uh, project. And uh, today we're going to be just, again, messing with the code, making the game Doom a little bit more fun. Uh, and. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is uh, something better than God Mode. So in God Mode, you're, you're invincible. You know, you get hit and it doesn't hurt you. So what's better than that? How about when you get hit, you get more health, you get more powerful. So again, I'm using Vim as my text editor. You can use whatever text editor you prefer, uh, as long, again, as long as it's a text editor and not a, a word processor. And uh, I'm using Vim. I'm jumping straight to line 911 in the source file. Uh, and again, the lines might change if the code is updated, you know, from the project, it might bump the line, but it should be around this line uh, in the pinter.c file. And here is the line of code where the player gets hurt. So when the player gets, gets shot by somebody, we're going to take the player, we're going to point at its health. What's its health? We're going to say, take its health and subtract from it 
whatever the damage the bad guy is placing on you. So when a bad guy shoots you, when a bullet hits you, or a barrel explodes, or a rocket explodes near you, uh, it sends out, this is how much damage I'm putting out. And with explosions, it's based on a radius. Um, but it says, this is the damage that you're getting hit with. So we're taking the player's health and subtracting that health from it, uh, that amount of damage from it. So what we want to do here is change that minus to a plus. So now, let's say you get shot and it's supposed to do 5% damage. It's actually going to give you 5% health. So we're going to say make that. And then we're going to oh, actually let's source PR boom plus. And now I go into the game and I go, hey, buddy, shoot me. And you see my health is already going up. So it sounds like I'm getting hurt. And my the screen turns red when I get shot and my face gets all mad, but my health is actually going up. So uh, I was thinking, you know, if you wanted to make a uh, X-Men mod of this game, just like they had an X-Men mod of Quake back in the day, if you wanted to have the player act like a player like Bishop, someone who absorbs other people's energy when they get hit, you could do something like this every time they get hit by a certain weapon. If you want, you can put an if-then statement, if this, then that, you know, and so if you get hit by a plasma uh, beam or something, uh, your life goes up. So that's one thing you can do here. Um, another thing we want to look at, okay, so in a previous video, we changed the uh, player's default health. So if we go into that same file, uh, line 62, this is where we set our initial health. So let me set this to... Uh, 999. So we'll make that and we'll run Doom. We'll go into here and I'll show you, as I showed you in a previous tutorial, if I come over here, oh, let me turn off what we did earlier because my health is still going up. Let's just change this back to a negative. Well, and while I'm in here, I might as well mention what these next two lines are, just so you know. So this is the player getting hit. We're subtracting damage from it. But then we say, if the player's health is less than zero, set the player's health to zero. So let's say my health is at 5% and someone hits me with 10% damage. The health bar is not going to show negative 5. It could, but this function stopping that. It's saying, yeah, if, if it goes below zero, just set the health to zero. That way it doesn't keep going down in the negative numbers. Um, so, yeah. Just wanted to point that out real quick. So we're putting this back to how it was. Now if I get shot, I get hurt. Um, but our initial health, when we, oh, let's uh, make that. Our initial health, when we're playing the game here, is set to 999. That's what we set the initial health to. And if I get shot, it goes down a little bit. If anyone will shoot me, there we go. But you see the blue vials. The blue vials, if I get it, boop, it goes to 200%. And as I mentioned, that's because the, mech, the max health set for the vials is 200. So when you pick it up, it's changing it to 200. Let's go ahead and change that. So we're going to go into a file. Uh, we'll use Vim. And we'll jump to line. Let me look at my notes here. 671 of our source. Uh, P, enter, C. And, oh, that's not right. That's the uh, wrong line. Line 336. And again, the lines might change if you download an updated version of the source code. Things might move, but should be around that area. So here, we're listing all things. What happens when you pick something up? So you can pick up the first type in armor, armor 2 a uh, health bonus, the you know, or this other, this is a, that's uh, a, a health bonus. This looks like the armor bonus, as you can see right here. And each time we pick one up, it's saying health plus plus. So it's saying it can go over 100%. But as we saw, it maxes out at 200%. That's because here we're saying, okay, every time we pick one up, add one. So if you've ever done any type of C or most programming languages, you know, if you have a value and you say plus plus, that means add one to whatever it's equals. If you did minus minus, it would subtract one. So we're saying that and we're saying, yeah, 
Uh, if the player's health is greater than whatever the max health bonus is, well then set the player's health to the max health bonus. Just like we're saying if it's under zero, set it to zero. We're saying if it's over the max, set it to the max. So what we can do is we can find out where this variable is set. So that's one thing we can do. I can go grep from all the files in this folder. I should put this here. Look for this, and we can see a few places, and we can see where it's defined. It actually looks like it's defined two different places. One, uh, it's finding your max health and multiplying it by two. Uh, and then another place, it's using another equation. So I'm not sure really which one of these is being used. I can go look at the code. It's probably an if-then statement. If this, then use this. If that, then use that. Um, but for what we're doing, uh, we're going to go back into our code here. And we can just say, oh, you know what? Let's set the max bonus to 1,000. So now, if I save that, make and run it. Now I should be able to go up to a thousand. Shoot me once or twice, okay. So are there enough files over here for me to, I don't think there's 25 files over there. Let me go grab a health pack real quick. Oh, that health pack won't work because I'm over a hundred and that health pack set to, okay. So show you, it's not dropping down to 200, which is what it was dropping down to before. It will cap out at 1,000. Now, let me start this level over again and just get rid of these guys. So, when you get to 1,000, well, I'm still not getting to it because I did get shot. I wanted to show you that 1,000 looks like 000 because anything more than three digits is going to go off the side there. So, um, so yeah, let me try that one more time. IDK, IDKFA, IDKFA, there we go. Seven. Okay, so now if I pick up one of these, my health goes to a thousand. It looks like zero, zero, zero. You see it's not going up any higher than that. So that's another thing, that's one thing we can do. We can change the uh, value of that variable or as we just did, just completely re replace the variable, or we can just delete these two lines and there is no max. So now the health will continue going up above that uh, infinitely until you know the game hits some sort of physical limit. So <clears throat> make that IDKFA, kill those guys. Kill those guys. Kill those guys. I got hit once. I was trying not to. Yeah, let's try that again. IDKFA. Seven. Man, you'd think with a BFG like this. Okay. So now you can see it looks like 004, but it's actually 1004, 1007 now. So you've removed the cap for those little blue vials. So that's pretty cool. So, uh, what else do I want to show you? Is there anything else I want to show you today? Let me look at my notes here real quick. Let's go. Okay, so right there, it says uh, the monsters you've killed. I see 7 out of 19. I don't think that was in the original game, uh, these messages. Again, there's been a lot of updates to Doom. For example, uh, the map is also much more advanced than it was in the original game. And there's other versions other than PR Boom that give you some other um, features. Kind of like, I think it's Chocolate Doom. As your life goes down, uh, your, your health goes down and your armor goes down, it changes color. Um, so anyway, that's showing the number of monsters that have their left and the number of monsters you have killed. Let's just quickly look at where that is in the source code. So according to my notes, it's saying it's on line 671 of this file. So let's go there. And here it's saying, I guess when I kill someone, resurrection count, it's going up, player kill count. 
So here, every time I kill something, it goes up one. So let's go ahead and change that. I haven't actually done this. We're going to change that to 10. So every time I kill one bad guy, it's going to add 10 to that total number of kills. So in theory, again, I haven't tried this yet. So zero out of 19, let me go ahead, kill both these guys and then go hide. Um, oops. Nope. Obviously, I wrote something wrong, and it's not showing, it's not adding up at all. So, what we can do to error check something, so as you can see, I'm running this in the shell, and there is output here. So, let me go in here, and what I'm going to do is, I wonder if it was, is this one? Well, no, because obviously something I did change it, so it was still at zero. Let's go ahead and change or do an output. So if you've done your very first C programming um, tutorial, you did a hello world so you know what the printf command does. It prints stuff to the shell. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to print a message. You have killed percent %i because it's an integer enemies. exclamation mark, and then new line there. And then here we're going to want to put what the variable is, which is our source kill count here. So we do that. And now, I wonder if there just has to be spaces in here. So let's just add spaces. So every time I kill somebody, theoretically, we should get a message out to the terminal, the shell, saying this message and giving us a value there. So let's go ahead and make that. And sorry, source PR boom plus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unmaximize this. Oh, and it jumped over to my second monitor there. So let's go ahead and There we go. So yeah, my math is not working, but my output message, it's telling me, oh, now it says I've killed one. Now it says I've killed one. Interesting. Interesting. So let's see. Let's go back out into our source code here. Let's just change this back to plus plus. Looking around the C, so source, the player, mission, flags, kill. Again, I hadn't tried this before. Oh, what's this? Player kill count down here. Counts all monsters' death, even those caused by other monsters. Okay. So, that might be something we can change. If I set this back to what it was, which was adding one each time, so let's just make that. So we haven't changed how it works, but we're displaying an output. So if you ever want to check something that's not working, you can always print F out to the shell. There you go, one enemy, two enemies. Again, in this particular version of Doom, I can go into the maps and see the number of monsters killed. And of course, if I get to the end here, it tells me the percentage killed. So, yeah, my goal of changing that number didn't work, but printing it out to the shell does work. So I just wanted to show you that in case you wanted to try to figure out why something is wrong. So anyway, I thank you for watching. Uh, there's more to come again. Uh, and in a few tutorials, we'll start hitting up hex editors to modify the game, uh, the Doom game, which we don't have to do since we have the source code, but I just wanted to give you an overview of changing something. I've done simple stuff in the past by changing strings, but we're actually going to change some numeric values in those uh, hex editor tutorials. So anyway, I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. There's also a link in the description to the notes 
for everything I've done in this video and all the previous videos. So go ahead and check that link out. Uh, and uh, I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's alright. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day. Part of a series. Uh, please be sure to check out the annotation on the screen for the full playlist. Obviously, watch the previous videos. Make sure you have everything set up for uh, that you need for editing the code and that you downloaded the code. Uh, working with PR Boom, which is a uh, version of Doom, and uh, we're just having fun with the source code. Uh, I think this last week that uh, we're going to be looking at the source code. Uh, really, well, we'll be looking at the source code, but uh, next week and the week after, we're probably going to be looking at modifying the binaries that we compile with a hex editor. Uh, but for today, we're going to be swapping out some items and, in the end, creating a endless bloodbath of enemies. So, um, let's go ahead and if we jump into a file here, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, and I'm going to go into... The file called source or uh, the folder source info C, and uh, we were in here in probably the first or second tutorial, and I showed you that each item in the game is defined here, and its initial settings are set up. So, uh, you know, spawn health. We removed this uh, uh, make shootable from it, and the the bad guys ignored us. I can set the players. Uh, well, here it says speed is zero because it doesn't move until you move them. You can set the mass, the height, the radius, you know, damage it causes, sounds that it uh, makes, or uh, those are sounds, those are types of deaths, animations. These are animation frames that we looked at in the shotgun tutorial. Uh, but important thing is each item has its own doom number. Now if it's negative one, I think I accidentally said in a different tutorial that negative one is the player. Actually negative one is I think any item that's not there initially. So you shoot a rocket, uh, you shoot a plasma beam or a BFG shot, I think all those things will be set to negative one. But for the most part, items and monsters and weapons all have their own unique uh, doomed number. So possessed here is our zombie, its number is 3004. The shotgun guy is nine. So what I could do, theoretically, is change this to nine and you would think oh wherever a zombie goes a shotgun guy will now go <laughs> depending on what order things are in this list that might work but it will mess something else up everything has to have its own unique number so the shotgun the zombie is 3004 so what we're going to do is we're just going to switch these two it's the best way to do this so now anywhere there was a zombie guy there's now a shotgun guy and anywhere there was a shotgun guy, there's now a zombie guy. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this and we will make it and we will run Doom. Oops. Uh, if I could type today. 
So before, those, those were just pistol zombie guys. Now they are shotgun guys. And anywhere there was a pistol guy, there's now a shotgun guy. And the other way around as well, which at this difficulty level, there, are, there were no shotgun guys on this level. Hard difficulty, I think there were some outside. Um, but you get the point. So if you were to just, whoops, uh, just change one of these, Again, depending on the order, one will work and the other one will just not be there. So like if I was to change the shotgun guy back here to nine, make the game and go in, let's see, there's nothing there because it's going to recognize the second one. So the shotgun guys where they are, I believe, are still going to be there, but these guys are gone because it, it the second one overrode the first. Um, that being said, now when you are creating your own level or editing a level in Doom and using level editor, if you have a good level editor, it lets you import, or at least it, you, you specify which binary you're using. So this binary is compiled, you look at that, and it will grab all the ID numbers out of there. If you're using an older editor, it may not have that feature. You may only be able to use uh, monsters and items that are already there. So if you want to create your own, you can do that, but you need a level editor that allows you to do that. Um, but let's have a little more fun with this, uh, and I'll show you, we'll go in here back into the source code. I'll change this back to, uh, was it 3004? So actually, according to my notes, the chainsaw is 2005. Now, if I go and find 2005 somewhere else, I can change that to 3004. So I just swapped the chainsaw for the zombie guys. So now if I make that and I start the game, you can see Everywhere there was a zombie, there's now a chainsaw, which I can go pick up. But initially in the original game, a little secret, if you turn around at the very beginning, there's a chainsaw over here. There's not now. There's a zombie guy. So I can pick up the chainsaw, but all these bad guys are now chainsaws. Same with these in here. So that's swapping items. Now, I said earlier this is going to lead to a bloodbath. There's another way to set where items are. So let's go ahead and go back into our code. We're gonna change this back to 3004, and we're gonna look for 2005. Oh, that's right, it's not 2005, we wanna change it back to 2005. Change, type in the right number. I keep typing in the wrong number, okay. Okay, so zombie, the possessed, we wanna change this back to 2005. So the chainsaw is back to being the 2005. If we make that, just to make sure I, I did that properly, things should be back. Okay, they're there, and there's a chainsaw over there. Okay, well, before I exit, let me show you. When you shoot the bad guys, they drop a little ammo clip, these little pistol guys. And there's already an ammo clip over in the corner here. So you think, okay, if I swap out the ammo clip and the shotgun guy, I should get a shotgun guy when I kill a pistol guy. That's logical thinking, but that's that's not how it works. Um, <laughs> because the we're changing the doom number here. The doom number, which is set for placing items on a map, not when they're spawned elsewhere, necessarily. Sometimes, possibly. Um, so what I want to do here is... As I said, the shotgun guy is 9, ammo clip is 2007. So if I find 2007, I'll change this to 9, and then I will find uh, 9, comma. Let's go back to the beginning of the file and then search 9, comma. Keep searching for it, go down a little bit. Oh, down a lot. Okay, here it is right here, shotgun guy. And we'll change him, I said the clip was 2007. We'll make that. We'll run that. We'll go in here and look, we got those guys. Where that clip was over there, it's a shotgun guy. So that worked. I swapped out those two. But if I shoot these guys, they're still dropping ammo clips, not shotgun guys. That's because we need to find the function where bad guys drop stuff. So real quick, let's uh, find that. And for my notes, 
I know that if I use my text editor and I jump to line uh, 787 of source p underscore int c, enter c, here we see drop stuff. This determines the kind of objects spawned during a death frame of a thing. A thing, in this case, will be our enemies. And we have a case statement here. We're saying, okay, if it's possessed, so if it's a zombie, drop a clip. If it's a shotgun guy, drop a shotgun. If it's a chain gun guy, drop a chain gun. So what we can do here is we'll change this. Instead of dropping a clip, we have to know what an object's called. Well, we already know a shotgun guy right here. It's called shotgun guy. So we'll say, sh and this is case sensitive, shot guy. And we know that a chain gun guy is called chain guy. Be sure to spell things properly. And here, oh, that's not what I want to change. We can change chain gun to possessed for the zombie. If we save that, make that, and run that, now, when I kill these guys, they drop a shotgun guy. When I kill a shotgun guy, they drop a chain gun guy. And when I drop a chain gun guy, he turns into a, a pistol guy. So you will end up with an endless bloodbath because you can never kill all the bad guys. IDDQD. Okay, IDKFA. Let me, let me have a little fun here too. So you end up with an endless bloodbath, and you're going to end up with a whole bunch of dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> now, you do have some bad guys. I don't know why I'm bothering killing these guys, because they're not dying. Such as the imps that don't drop anything when they die. I have not done this, but I would assume that you could go into our code here and add a case, you gotta find out the imp's name, I don't know if it's MT, imp, or whatever they're called, but find that out, and you can add a case statement, and say that they're item, and you can tell them to drop something, you can tell them to drop a BFG, so when you kill an imp, every time you drop him, he's gonna give you a BFG. So, you can add your own case statements there, I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial, because I think I've shown you everything I wanted to show you today, but thank you for watching, please visit filmsbychris.com, that's Chris the K. there should be a link in the description, as well as a link to hopefully some notes on what we just did here today. I hope you're enjoying this. And again, next week, we're going to start looking at um, working with a hex editor to modify the binary files of Doom. So, as always, I thank you for watching and hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com I'm Chris, that's Chris the K that's me right there my daughter Ember and my wife Jennifer we pretty much live in the swamps of Florida I'm a firefighter by day as well as by night, we work long hours but that's not why you're here you're here about the videos I put up on YouTube these videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.
Okay, this is, again, a series. This is part six, I believe, of a series. Uh, be sure to check out the annotation on the screen for the full playlist. Uh, and you'll want to watch the previous videos before watching this one. But before the last uh, few videos, we've been modifying the PR Boom, which is a, a version of Doom. Uh, we've been modifying the source code and compiling it, making the game have new functionality. Uh, today, we're actually going to start editing the binary file. Now, this is something you don't have to do with Doom anymore because it's it's open source. You can get the source code. Uh, there's a few different versions out there and modify it and make your changes. But if it wasn't open source, if the source code was not available, if you wanted to make modifications to the game, uh, to the actual functionality of the game, not just you know the graphics, which there were WAD editors, you would have to edit the binary. Back in the day, there was a program called uh, Hex Do... What was it called? Do Hex something? And uh, it would allow you to modify certain things like the speed of a character, of a, of a character, the damage, its health. It was a great little tool. And what it was, it was manually editing the binary file, which uh, it was do actually, I should say manually. It was doing it for you, so you didn't have to manually edit the binary file. Today we're going to be looking at it's doing something very basic, changing some messages in the game. Uh, by editing the source code. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start Doom up. There we go. So in here, start the game, I can say IDKFA, which is a cheat code, and up at the top it says, very happy ammo added. That was the, the message, so if I, again, IDKFA, that's the message for that cheat code. And if you watch previous videos, almost all the messages in the game are set in a file, they're predefined. But uh, luckily, lots of times when binary files are com compiled, the strings maintain their stringiness. <laughs> so we can actually go into a hex editor and very easily find the strings we're looking for and edit them. I've done this in a previous tutorial. Um, you know, if you have a program that has menus and stuff, you can edit the menus in many cases. So all depending on how it's compiled, though. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use a program called hex edit that should be in your repositories for your distro. So if you're on a Debian-based distro, you can use, you know, such as Debian or Linux Mint, you can use apt-get and install hex edit. And we want to point it at our file, uh, which is prboom. It's inside our source folder here, prboom plus in this case. Now, right where you're like, oh, okay, so up on the, on the left-hand column is the the um, hex value of the position that you're at. So you can see line one, we start at zero, 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 zero. Line two is, says 18. That's because there's, that's how far down there's, depending on how many, how you're displaying it, that number will change. That's just where line two starts is at that position. And then you have your hex code. And then the third column is kind of an ASCII output of that uh, hex code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit tab and if you're not too familiar with binary, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the actual binary code, the center column, next week. But I hit tab to come over to this ASCII section, and ASCII is just the like plain text. So what we want to find is where it said happy ammo load. So I'm going to type, I'm going to say forward slash to search, and I'm going to say ammo. And ammo number, ammo per. So you can start going through here until you find where it says very happy ammo load. But I can tell you right now, you're not going to find it like this. Why? Oh, because your search is case sensitive. I'm just scrolling back up to the top right now. I don't know the command in this particular program to jump back up to the top of the file. Anyway, an example, I can say forward slash, oh, maybe it's ammo like that. And you can start searching like that. And there's some words ammo with it, but none of them say happy ammo load. Okay, so... How can I search through this and find the string I'm looking for? I'm sure there's a way to search case insensitive in this program, but the way I normally search for strings, a quick and easy way is to use a program called strings and another program called grep. And I've mentioned strings before. It's if you have a binary file that you're curious about how it works, the first thing I do is I run strings on it. So strings, the name of our binary file, and I'll hit enter, and it brings up all ASCII characters from that file. So now I can use grep, and I can grep for ammo. Great, lots of ammo in there, yellow ammo bars, blah, blah, blah. But we want it to be case insensitive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add dash I here. That means case insensitive. Boom. And now I can even grep for dash I happy, which is actually probably a better thing to search for, because how many times is the word happy in the video game Doom? So I hit that, and you can see, oh, 
they did write it very happy. Now you might think, go into the game, see how it's written there, but as I've mentioned in previous tutorials in the game, everything is displayed as capital letters. So now I can say, I can search for very happy ammo, just like that. So I'm going to start up my hex editor again, hit tab to go over to our ASCII, forward slash to search, and I'm just going to center click to paste that in there, or you can type it out, hit enter, and here we are, very happy ammo added. So important thing to note when you were editing things like this in a hex editor. The code is very specific on where stuff is. You can't change the lengths of stuff like this without screwing stuff up, at least not how I do it or know how to do it. So I can change this message. I can change it to very, oops, cool ammo added. And you notice that there's still that D at the end there. I can just space over that. That's fine. Not going to notice space in the game. I can hit Control X and Y to save that. So I exited and saved. Now I can run the game again. And now when I go in here and I type in IDKFA, it says very cool ammo added rather than very happy, happy ammo added. Now, as I was saying, you need to keep it that length. So you can do stuff shorter, but can't really do stuff longer. If you know how, let me know. Because it all has to do with pointers. In C code, things point, this is at this spot. Go there, and then it does that till it finds the end of that. I don't know what's called. I'll say exit code. Uh, um, but basically, if I come over here and I say uh, cool to find out where we were. So here, very cool ammo added. You notice there's a dot right here where my cursor is. It looks like a period, but it's not. That's indicating the end of that string. So when you type in that code, that the cheat code, the doom binary goes, okay, look in memory and go to this point. And it goes right to where my cursor is right now, the very beginning there, and display that until you hit the end of that. And this dot right here is where that ends. Now, if I hit tab, you see it brings me back over to right here, my uh, the hex code. So I can tab back and forth, and you see it says zero, zero. So zero, zero is the, is the code for that. If I put a period right there and tab over, you'll notice that it's 2E. See, 2E. So a period and that end of the string are two different things. They may look the same over in the ASCII because it's just being displayed as a period. It is not really a period. It is a zero zero it's like a null character so if I tried to make this longer and I was just to wipe out that dot as you can see now over here it's showing up as a 20 in the hex code the code the program is now going to go okay when you display this message start here and go all the way to here so it's going to display that second message too which is obviously not what you want and not too bad in this case. So if I hit control X and Y to save, and then I run the game and I go into the game and I type in IDKFA, you can see it just starts displaying the next message and it actually even gets cut off because it's too long for it to be displayed here. So again, IDKFA, it says hat, very cool ammo added. And then it starts displaying another message, which is for when you turn off God mode. So if I say IDDQD, turning it on, IDDQD, turning it off, it doesn't affect that message because when I type in that, that, that other cheat code, and let me go here, it doesn't care that that null character isn't before there because the code says go straight to this point in memory and display everything to this dot. So although we didn't want that much display, we didn't really screw up the game, but that's because we're just working with strings here. If that if you remove the null character for something outside of these strings, the game will probably crash or could cause some sort of security risk theoretically, especially if you're playing a network game. So you want to be conscious of that. So if I accidentally deleted that, such as I did, how do I put that back? I can't just put a period there because it will display a period in the game there. What I'll have to do is hit tab and I'll say zero, zero. And now that character is a zero, zero. If I hit control X, Y to save, run the game again. Notice that we don't have to recompile because we're directly editing the binary file. IDKFA, and we're back to our very cool ammo added. 
So that is editing strings here in, uh, in Doom. And again, this should work with most binary files unless it's encoded to protect those strings, uh, which some companies do. It can also be compressed to try to save space, in which case strings may not show up. Uh, but that is how you can edit strings, and you can do that for pretty much any message uh, in the game. So anything that's plain text, or even messages that we're seeing here in, in the shell that are outputting, you can you should be able to find those strings. So like if we, I haven't tried this, but I think if we go hex edit, I'll come over here and I'll search for music player, you can see that music player, you know, is there. And I don't know if music player is anywhere else. Okay, so just real quick, I'll just change this to a D. Control X, yes. I'll run the game. And if I exit out, you can see here where that message was. It now says D instead of P for player. So yeah, uh, basically in this game, any string that you can edit, uh, you, that that's a string, you should be able to edit. Now, in the actual game, I believe this new game, options, load game, save game, those are actually images, those aren't actual strings. Same once you go into here. Um, but, like if I was to go into nightmare mode, this all is strings inside the game, so I can modify that. So if you wanted to modify this new game option load, those are actually pictures that are inside the WAD file. You can change those with a WAD editor, uh, which I may touch on editing WADs at the end of this series. Uh, but if you ever played with Doom, uh, you've probably played with WAD files. That's the, the normal way of editing games to change picture sounds and stuff like that. So that's it. That's just changing strings. Next week, we're actually going to change the hex code in the binary uh, to change your player's life, uh, you know, health value, the default health value. Uh, so that's something I hope you will find interesting. We'll compare two files to figure out where the change is made and then go in there and change it. So I thank you for watching. If you enjoy these tutorials, I hope that you are. I hope you're getting something out of them. If not, you know, learning about how to go in and edit source code and binary files, just I hope that you like the video game Doom and that you can make it do fun things now. Um, my website, filmsbychris.com, there should be a link in the description. Be sure to visit there. Also check out the description for um, notes on what we did here today so you can see everything there. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day. Again, this is part of a series, uh, this is video 7 I believe, on uh, editing 
the video game Doom. The first five or so videos, we were editing a source code. Last week, we started looking into a hex editor to modify strings, which is very easy to do. Now we're going to be looking at actually modifying, um, you know, uh, in this case, we're going to look at the player's health, which is not just a plain string. So what I need to do is I need to figure out where in the binary file the health is. And this will vary depending on the source code, depending on the compiler, depending on your architecture, whether you have 32-bit, 64-bit, if you're running an ARM processor. So when I do this, I just want to point out that I'm going to tell you, you know, we're going to this point in the file. It will most likely be different on your system, but I'm going to show you how to find it if you have the source code. <laughs> um, you're probably going to ask at the end of this, well, how do I do this if the source code isn't available? And my answer is, uh, it's not something I've ever actually done. Uh, basically, I think you use a decompiler, and then you find the point in the code and jump to it. But I'm going to show you by comparing two different binary files, comparing them, which is a good thing to know how to do, and then finding that point that we're looking for. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just type in make. I've got a clean install of Doom here, and I'm going to now, I'm going to move, let's bring this up here, move the binary file we just created, which is called PRBoom plus, and we're going to put it in that same folder, we'll call it Doom 1. We can run that just to have a look, Doom 1, and it's actually Doom 2 is the game, I'm just calling the file Doom 1. If I come in here, you can see my default health is 100. We're going to change it to 1000, and doing so it will look like 000 in the health bar because the last digit will go off if you have more than three. Um, so let's go into the source code and change where that is. We've did this in a previous tutorial. It's in this file. We're going to go to line 62 of the file p enter in uh, .c in the source folder. And here I'm just going to add a zero. We're going to make that the only change you make because more changes you make is going to make the binary file a lot different. And we're looking for something in particular. We're looking for that point. So we don't want to change anything else at this point. So now I'm going to say make. And I'm going to move that that we just created. I'm going to call that Doom 2. Now, if I source Doom 2 and go into the game, you can see it says 000, which is actually 1,000. If someone shoots me, you'll see I'll get 900 something. Shoot me. Thank you. OK. So now we need to compare the file to find out where the differences are. And there are going to be differences other than the thing we just changed. Um, but not very many. You're probably going to get maybe 20 lines of code, and there's going to be, or 20, yeah, 20 lines of output from this command when we're all done. I'm just going to copy and paste this. CMP will compare binary files. There we go. We get that right there. Um, and then we can also add a geoc command to that. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm just going to copy and paste it. This all is in the notes in the description of this video. If you click on the notes, Hopefully I remember to put it there. It'll bring you to uh, a paste spin file that has the notes on this whole video there, as well as uh, last week's video. So basically here, we're getting the differences, but we want to see it in uh, hex code. So there we go. We can do that. And now you can see right here, we got a bunch of different stuff, but we have differences. The last two lines are what we're looking for. They're right next to each other. You can see there's the location in the file. And 6400, and this one's uh, E803. Uh, let me real quick show you here. If we bring up, I'm going to use Perl to do this, although there's online um, converters. I'm going to clear the screen. Oh, why did I clear the screen? Because let's not clear the screen. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to just paste this code here. And actually, that's what I wanted to show you. So we're using Perl and we're executing it, telling it to print, unpack, and we're telling it just look at the notes. I'm not much of Perl. I just look this up online. But if we do 6400 and hit enter, we get 100. If we change that to E803, we get 1,000. There is our difference at these two points. So if we open up hex edit, which again should be in your repositories, uh, just use apt get to install that if you're on a Debian based system. And we're going to modify the original Doom file, the Doom 1 file, to be uh, have a thousand percent health just like the Doom 2 file at start. So we're going to go source Doom 1, and I'm going to hit F4 and paste in 
this location and I actually did that wrong. So let me real quick quit out of that. I pasted in this location. If you don't do the the um, geoc part of this, if you just do this first part, if we scroll up you'll see right here it gives you a different number. So we can use this number but you can see this value is different. That's why I converted it. So I could put in that value to jump to that spot or if I use this one, if I hit F4, you can see or F4, you can see it puts 0x saying this is hex code. We'll paste it after that. If we use the one without geoc, you would want to erase that. So I'll hit enter, and there we are, 64 and 00. So as we said, if we change that to be, I believe it was E803, uh, according to my notes, I'll hit Control X save that and now we can run that doom one file that did have 100% health at the beginning and now it is also at a thousand so we modified that now you might try to figure this out using an online converter so let me find where I have that so here's this example I just googled this so uh, we want to convert hex to decimal converter is what we want and if we run our code here again, so we were saying, using our Perl code here, that E0, uh, yeah, E803 is 1000, but if you put that in this hex editor, it gives you a much bigger number. It gives you 59,395. Because what we actually want is 03E8, which is 1000. Okay, so, and you can also write that that leading zero does not need to be there. We'll give you the same thing. I am not advanced enough on this topic to explain why that is. And it threw me off at first when I was trying to do this. That in this binary, it flip-flops those two digits. Those two characters. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, or those two set of characters. I don't know why. If you know why, definitely comment below. This is not my strong suit. This is just me playing around and sharing what I've learned. Hopefully, my ignorance will allow me to explain it in a way that other ignorant people will understand. Ignorant people on the topic. I don't mean to call you ignorant. Um, will understand it. Because sometimes when you understand something really well, sometimes you don't explain it very well uh, to someone who doesn't understand all the basics. So I just wanted to say that, and hopefully I'm explaining that well. Now, let, let's look at this a little bit more. So... How does hex work? Well, you have values 0 through 15. So there's, 50, there's 16 values altogether, 0 through 15. And it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So if I was to just put F in here and convert, I get 15. So our code ended in 8. Like that. I'm sorry. Our code actually ended in, yeah, so 8 there. So I had 3E8, I think was 1,000? Yes. So if we were to change this to 300, we get 768. Let's actually just put that up here, paste that, plus, oh, you already see that I've done this from my history, but we'll say that, and then our next character was E, so if I do E0, we get 244, we'll add that in there, and again, if we just did 8, which was our last character, we get 8, and if we add that all up, and hit enter, we get 1000. So, again, the first column, as I started to explain, I don't want to get too much, you can definitely look up how hex works, but the first column in this case, 8 will go through 16. And then the next column will be a multiplier of that. So if we were to 1, 0, we should get 16. And then the last column, 1, 0, 0, is valued at 256. So if we change that to 3, it's going to be 3 times 256, which is uh, 768, and so forth and so on. So basically, you multiply the first column well, the first column is its, its value. It's up to 6 or 15. The next column, you will be a multiplier of that. So if it's just 1, it'll be 16. So if it's 
1, 1, we're going to get 17. And if it's 2, 1, you're going to get 16 times 2, which is 32, plus 1, so we should get 33. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I did that right. And if we do 1, there's zero, so that's 256, so we take 256 plus our 33. 256 plus 33 is 289. So that's just a quick rundown. Definitely look up and read more about hex values, but that's how those numbers work, and for some reason they're flip-flop in this binary file. So again, I can go in there. Well, let's go here back to this website and say convert from, I, I flipped it from decimal to here. So let's say we wanted the value to be 500 converts. So it's 0, 1, F, 4, but flip-flopped in our code. So I'm going to pull this off the side. I'm going to go back into our hex editor here. Oh, you know, I need to get that location again. So control X and I'm not going to be able to scroll up that far. Let's go here. The file is different now. Oh, because the files are the same. Poo. Uh, I can't remember what that point was in the code. So we'll just, we'll recompile it. Poo, I wish I wrote down that, uh, <laughs> that point. See, the thing is, it's showing the difference in the file, and the difference before was those last two lines. Well, I made them the same now, so my comparing is not showing me that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vim this again, and just for this, I'll change this to 100, save it, make it, and I'll move that back to 1. So Doom 1 now is set back to 100 health. If I run that again, Doom 1, you can see it's back to 100 health because we recompiled it. So now if I compare the two again, and I can see them right here, the differences, I can come in here and I can say now say control hex, control R, hex edit, and I'm going to modify that file. F4 in this program, paste that that I just copied from that output, brings me to here, 6400, and as I was saying, if we wanted it to be 500, it would be F401. Hopefully I'm right on this. F401 should be 500. I'll hit Control X, Y to save. Now if I run Doom 1 again, and I go in, our health is at 500. So, again, in this particular case, we had two binaries to compare to find the differences, and we're going to look that up. So, it would be a little bit different if you only had one binary, if you didn't have the source code on actually finding it. But uh, it's good to know how to compare files. I'll give you a quick rundown on, on hex values. If you're familiar with, with uh, a binary, which is values of two powers of two, column one is 0, 1, then 2, then 4, then 8. This is, you know, through 0 through 15, 16, uh, 256, because it's powers of 16. So if you understand binary, you should understand hex value is basically the same, just instead of counting by powers of 2, you're counting by powers of 16. If you understand binary, I recommend looking at that before you're looking at hex. It's a little bit simpler uh, because you're just working with powers of 2. You know, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, uh, 32, uh, 64, and these numbers should be looking familiar, 128, because they're what you, know, you work with a lot in computers. Um, I think that's all I wanted to show you for this tutorial. I thank you for watching, uh, and I hope it wasn't too confusing. I hope I explained things well. Again, look at the links in the description of this video, and uh, the one link will bring you to my notes on this that will hopefully explain it all, because it's the notes that I wrote down, that I read from, and I hope that you have a great day. And again, my website's filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link to that in the description as well. Again, have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to FilmsByChris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers, 
and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's alright. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day. This part, this video is part of a series of videos. Uh, the first uh, five or so, we were working with the PR Boom, which is a uh, version of Doom, its source code, and modifying the game. The last two videos or so, we've been editing the binary file itself with a hex editor. And right now, we're going to do the same thing, uh, but a little different. In the first hex editing video, we changed a string by going into it with hex edit and go over to the ASCII section, the ASCII column, and modifying it. You can do that from the command line. I don't really see someone doing this too often this way, but maybe you want to write a code that automates some changes. Obviously, if you have a binary that's important, you're going to want to, you know, not modify it directly, so we're actually going to be dumping it into a new file. And if you do want to modify the original, be sure to have a backup copy because any little change could make a mistake. So, before we're using a program called Hex Edit, today we're going to be using Hex Dump. Should be in your repositories if you don't already have it installed. Uh, so, let me just real quick here show you that I've got uh, Doom. Oh, let me compile it. Make. And I'm going to, just to keep things simple, move what we just compiled. Oops. To source Doom one. Okay, so I created a, a binary file. I compiled it, renamed it, and now I can run it like so. And you can see it's normal now. If I run over, you know, I can pick up stuff that says "picked up armor bonus." And if I pick up the health, it says "picked up health bonus." We're going to change both those messages with one simple command or a one-liner command that piped three commands into one. And if I type in hex, let me clear the screen, hex dump, and I give it that file that we just looked at, it dumps out the hex code. Okay, lots of it. Control C to kill that or just let it finish and take too long. I'm just going to copy and paste this from my notes. <laughs> So, control L. So we have hex dump dash VE and then inside single quotes one slash one and then inside double quotes within those single quotes percent dot two X and then the name of our file to dump. If I run that, oh, if I run that, we get this. It's um, basically removing all the spaces and putting everything on basically one line instead of having those different columns. So it's the same output, just displayed different. Again, there's a link in the description to my notes for this project up on Pastebin. Go ahead, check those out. You know, I'm not gonna explain this full command because I don't completely understand it. I just know what it does. Not exactly how it does it, but it's just removing the column, the spaces in the columns. Okay, so we have that. So now we wanna replace part of the code uh, the, the hex code with another piece of hex code. Okay, so first off, what do we want to replace? I'm going to change it so instead of saying you picked up a health bonus or you picked up an ammo bonus, I want to say you picked up a health item or you picked up a, 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 an a ammo item. So in the previous video, strings is a great, great tool to get a quick overview of the ASCII information in a file. So strings dumps out anything that is... Um, 
an ASCII character. I'm going to grep for the word bonus. And here we have a few different places. Obviously, these first two are what we want to modify. Modifying these other ones will corrupt the game. We don't want to modify them. So what I want to do is I want to modify just these first two. And so what's different between them and the rest in this particular case is that they have a period at the end. So I'm not going to just replace the word bonus. I'm going to replace the word bonus period with the word item. So what do I have to do? I'm going to take that and then there's ASCII to hex converters for the shell. I'm just going to use a web-based one because I have it up here. I'm going to paste my uh, ASCII here, click convert, and there we go. If I Let's undo padding. Okay, because we don't want any spaces. I'm also not really sure if case matters there, but I'm going to change those E's to capital E's and the F's to capital F's. So that is our bonus. So that's what we're going to be searching for and replacing inside our file. We're going to use sed to do this. Sed is a very great tool for editing text files from the shell. I want to change it again to be the word items now, or item. So bonus, B-O-N-U-S, period. That's six characters. Item, I-T-E-M, period. Five characters. We need them to be the same length. So, could say items, but you're only picking up one thing. So if I say convert this, again, I would want to change any letter to an upper, uh, uppercase, just to be sure. But, th again, this is only five characters. We need six. If you watched previous tutorial, we know that space is the number 20 in hex. So I'll just add 20 to the end of that. So, if we take that... And we take our hex dump and then we put it into sed. And just to make sure I do this right in the tutorial and I don't screw up, I'm going to actually copy and paste what we just did. So now we're saying sed substitute anywhere that we have this, which is the hex for bonus period. And we're going to say replace it with the hex for items period and then 20, just add a space at the end. The G says do it globally. Now, we're looking for the one with a period. Again, we could set said to say, just look for the first two, but maybe it's the third two. So I'm just, that's why I just use the period to, to find the two out. So if I do that, it's going to output the output with those changes. Well, I don't want that output on my screen, control C to kill that. I want to dump it into a file. But I can't just dump it in a file because it will just create a text file that has the hex code in it. I don't want the hex code. I want the actual binary executable. So we're going to take all that we've created so far. We're going to pipe it again, take that output, and put it into a program called XXD. XXD, we're going to say dash R dash P. Again, I don't even know what those arguments mean. I just know that I looked this up a while ago and it works. I'm going to redirect that output. Well, let's look what that looks like. Yeah. So it looks like if you tried to cat out a binary file. Control C to kill that. If you ever do that and your terminal gets messed up, just type reset and that will fix that. So it's actually creating the binary executable and displaying it to my screen. I don't want it displayed to my screen. I want it in a file. So I'm going to say redirect that into sed, or sorry, source folder, doom, and we'll call it doom2. Just naming the file has nothing to do with what version of Doom, because that depends on what WAD you're using, not what executable when you're working with PR Boom. So we did that. We create the executable, but if we go to run it now, it's not going to work for the simple reason that I don't have permission because it's not executable. So what we want to do is say change mod plus X, just like if you created a script. Now I can do source Doom 2, start the game. And now, when I pick up the little health vials or the little am or, uh, armors, it should say that you picked up a health or armor item rather than bonus. So let's see. There we go. Picked up an armor item up in the top left of the screen. And if I go pick up some of these blue vials, picked up a health item. So that is how you would change a string from the shell. Obviously, in most cases, you're going to use something like hex edit and the file you want to edit, just like we did two videos ago. Makes a little more sense, but if for some reason you need to automate this in a script, 
that is one way to do it. And I hope you found that interesting. I don't know, again, how useful it is. Um, I mean, obviously, there is a use for it. Just probably not very common. <laughs> and But at least it's something educational. You hopefully you learned something new. I hope you've enjoyed these Doom tutorials. Uh, I, at this point, I don't know. I may do one or two more on editing WAD files, or this may be the end of this series. But either way, you'll know by clicking on the link to the playlist, which will hopefully be an annotation on the screen and maybe in the description of the video. Again, all the notes for this and the previous videos should be in the description of the video as well. So click on that. They're paste. You go to paste bin, and they'll just be there. And um, if you have questions, I really don't know if I'm going to be able to help because, again, this is a, a topic that I basically just told you everything I know on the topic. So <laughs> if you have a question outside of that, I probably don't know. But if you know more, if you have suggestions, definitely let me know because this is a topic that I've always been interested in since I was 15, so 20 years ago, playing with hex editors, but I know very minimal about it. So I thank you for watching. This is by Chris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's alright. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day. Uh, with the Doom executables mostly, but now we're shifting gears and going from the code and the binary, the actual program of the game, into the media part of it, uh, which are WAD files. They're packages. Um, think of them kind of like zip files full of all the pictures, sounds, levels, music, all the artistic part of the game uh, in them. And uh, now I want to point out that Doom has been open source for a while, and there are different ports of it. We've been working with PR Boom. There's other ones, Chocolate Doom, and one called Vavoom, each having their own special functionalities. Um, but the WAD file in Doom is not free. So the source code is under a GPL, but the game media is still copyrighted information. So when you're on a Debian-based system, for example, you can install PR Boom, and uh, you also have an option in the repositories for Debian anyway to install the shareware version of the game, which is the first nine levels or so of the game. Uh, and if you want to get the full game, the code doesn't change, but you need to get the WAD file off the original CDs. So I have those because um, I still have my CDs from the original game. If you uh, look hard enough online, you can find them, but you're really supposed to buy them. I, there may or may not be some sort of reference on where to get them in the notes for this video, which are in the in the link in the description, just a little hint there. Anyway, uh, so I'm gonna be messing with the Doom 1 and Doom 2 wads here. Uh, if you want to go fully open source with both the uh, game and the media, there is free Doom that should be in your pod stories, which has been an ongoing project. I haven't checked to see whether it's up to date, but for a while, at least not too long ago, they were keeping it pretty up to date, where their goal was to replace all the copyrighted material, all the um, 
textures for the walls, all the sprites for the characters and objects, all the music, everything, all the graphics and audio and levels from Doom, they are creating their own and replacing the ones in the game, and it's called Free Doom. Um, so check that out. Uh, but how do they do that? Well, they need to extract these WAD files, modify stuff, and repackage them. And we're going to do a few different videos on these, and there's WADs and then there's IWADs, and I'll get more into that in the future. But let's go ahead and just start. These are the tools that you'll need for this video. So use aptget or aptitude, whichever you have on your system and or prefer, or use your graphical package manager. Uh, MHWave edit, we'll use in one of these upcoming videos to edit the audio. Um, GIMP we'll use to add some images. We may use Image Magic to add some images. And then the big thing is uh, Do Text, which also will be under your repositories, at least on uh, Debian, as Doom Wad Editor. This Doom Wad Editor, that's why I have it commented out, just points to Do Text. And Do Text has been around for a long, long time. I'm pretty sure back in the 90s when I used to uh, mess with the Doom game, which is some of my first real programming, if you will, uh, in a way. Um, my real first experience developing on computers was mainly messing with Doom, and Doom te uh, Do Text was uh, a WAD editor they had, and I think I also used one called WinText, which was like a GUI front end for Windows for this, but we're going to be looking at the basic command line for this, which is basically unpackaging and repackaging. And then if you want to install PR Boom, that should install the basic game, and I think by default it will also install the shareware version of the game or Freedom. So go ahead and install those. I already have them installed, so I'm not going to do that. Once you have those installed, what we need to do is we need to use do text uh, to extract our wads. So I'm going to say dash doom because I'm going to extract doom one wad. If you're going to do doom two, it'll be doom two, and then tell it where the wad is, which. Uh, if you've installed them on your system, if you download them, you have them in a folder somewhere uh, to install them to your system so that PR Boom sees them without you having to tell them where they are. They are going to be under on a Debian based system. USR, share, games, doom, and then doom.wad will be the doom1 wad. And then we're going to say dash et um, ratc for extract. And when I hit enter, it extracts everything in that WAD file. So I can list here, you can see there's multiple different folders. I'm going to open up a file browser to into the same folder here. So like levels, we're not going to really get into those much, but you'll need a level editor. There is one in the repositories. I don't remember what it's called. We're going to mainly be looking at sound effects and visual stuff. So for example, here we have graphics. And here are some graphics for the game, including the uh, player's face, which is on the toolbar in the game. You know, the main uh, logo screen, so that's that there. So let's go ahead and actually let's um, modify this title image. All the images are uh, PPMs, uh, which GIMP can handle. So let's go ahead, I'm going to right click this and say opening GIMP. So there we go, we have it. It's uh, 320 pixels by 200 pixels. And that's your main logo, main title screen when you start the game. Now, let me go ahead, go back to my shell here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to quickly download an image. I'm going to download it. And if I just open this in a shell, Oh, I have that open on another workspace, so that I'm not going to flip through. Anyway, it's uh, let me copy that address and open up a new window here. That just redirects to an image of me and my daughter in Colorado. I kind of picked this picture just because this big uh, little rock here uh, kind of reminds me of the sky textures in Doom. So I'm going to take that image. I'll just save as, and I'll put it in my temp folder as main.jpg. Doesn't matter as long as I know where I saved it. Let's go back to GIMP, okay? Best thing to do when you're editing these files is to basically put them in place of the original files. So instead of creating a new file and saving it over this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, say, I'm going to open that file that I just downloaded and instead of saving this over that, because there's certain settings uh, not so much for the pictures, but definitely for the sounds, but I want to make sure that 
the resolution everything is set properly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go scale, not canvas, but uh, image scale. And as you can see, as I said, 320 by 200. Let me put this to 300 to see what it is. Oh, and that actually rescales it down to the same resolution there, which I actually want. I'm going to crop myself out of this photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 500 scale, see what that looks like. And I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste that over this and move it like so. And I'm going to make that a new layer. I'm not going into detail on how to use GIMP, but you can edit these pictures however you want. But what I'm going to do is uh, I think I'm going to create a new layer just for fun and make it a red layer. And it's there we go. So we have red image and I'm just going to choose one of these overlays till I find one that I like. There we go. Uh, darken only. It kind of looks doomish. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to now hit uh, control E or you can go edit and we can override the original picture. And so I can close out GIMP now. And if we go back into our file manager, which I'm using uh, PC man and go into our graphics folder. Right there is our image that I have replaced. So what we need to do is we need to package this back into a WAD file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say um, do text and we want to package it. Now there's two different types of WADs. Again, I'm going to do a basic WAD. This would be like an add-on file to add features to the game where you can also make an iWAD which is basically like making a new game. I'm going to say dash doom because it's a doom one WAD and again I'm going to tell it where my um, oh no I'm sorry I'm looking at my notes here I'm just going to say dash WAD or dash make I'm sorry it's late in the day uh, and I'm going to call it one dot wad. I'm gonna hit enter, and it just packaged everything up into that wad file. Now to run that, I'm gonna say pr boom dash file. Uh, I also want to tell it what version of Doom I'm because by default I have Doom one, Doom two installed. If I start pr boom, it automatically starts up Doom two. This is a Doom one wad. So if I was to just run pr boom uh, and type in file and what did I call my wad file? Just one. Okay, one dot wad and I try to start that, there's the logo screen, but then when I go into the game, you notice how things are blurry. That's because I loaded up a Doom 1 WAD for Doom 2, and um, although you can make WADs that modify stuff in both, but since I repackaged all the artwork, there's some stuff that's missing. And so some of these textures are missing and it's causing problems. Not a problem, we're gonna get into that more later on. Uh, but what I want to do is tell it which IWAD I want to run. Dash IWAD. And I'm going to again say USR share game or games doom doom one or doom dot wad. And that's all has to do with wherever you have your wad files saved. Now if I hit enter, there's my logo screen, my main title screen, and I go into here and we start it up. Doom 1 and as you can see all the textures are proper and if you look at those mountains up there you kind of see why I kind of picked that picture as the title screen. Let's change another graphic and um, so let's go PC man or whatever file browser you use and I'm going to go into um, graphics again and right here is our Doom logo. So I'm going to open that up in GIMP again and zoom in. Okay, unlike working with PNGs or GIFs or GIFs, there's uh, not a transparent layer, but we're using a certain color as a transparent color. So you see this uh, greenish color here? That's actually transparent in the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my color here, click my eyedropper, and choose that color. Okay, and then I'm going to flip that to my background color. And now I could paint over what's here, but what I'm going to do is again put that to the background color, Control A to select all, and hit delete. And when you delete without a transparent layer, it makes the background color whatever you deleted. So right now we have a completely transparent um, 
image. If I was to resave this, you would not see the words Doom at the top of the main menu. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up a browser and I could create text in GIMP, but to make things easy, I'm just going to go to cooltext.com. If you've never been here, it's a quick, easy way to create some text. And I'm going to type in Linux here and I'm going to pick some colors. Let's pick this red color and let's pick that red color and make it a little bit darker. Okay, so now we have this cool text here. I'm just going to right click and save this image as and I'll call it main title logo in my temp folder for now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say in here, I'm going to say file, open, and recent files, main title logo. There it is. Now look at the resolution. My text is bigger than the original photo. See, if I was to try to save this, it's not too much bigger, so it probably wouldn't cause any problems, but it's best to keep things the same resolution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say scale this image, not canvas, but the image, and I'm going to say one, two, three, and that was the longest size, so save that. Control A, Control C, Control V to paste it in here. Now I can Control E and export that over the original and control Q to quit out of GIMP. And if I go back to my shell here, I can, again, if I now, if I try to do text, make one wad, I'm gonna get an error because by default, it's not gonna let you overwrite that wad that you made. So I'm going to say, uh, remove one dot wad or just create one with a new name. Now I'll do text, make wad and it will generate that new wad for me. And now I can again say, we're saying here, start Doom. What IWAD am I using? I'm using the Doom 1 IWAD, wherever I have that placed. And then I'm going to append to that with file of 1WAD that we just created. So I hit that now, if I hit escape, you can see at the top, instead of Doom, it says Linux. And I'll quit out of that. Okay, so we're moving along here. Now, let's list things out. Okay, so here is my Doom 1 wad, and you can see it's 12 megabytes. It's 12 megabytes because I'm repackaging all of the art from the entire game and all the sounds and all the music into this file, where really I only changed two images. And so now if I was creating a new iWAD, if I was creating a new game that I'm going to just completely replace everything, you want to create an iWAD. And the way you do that is, first of all, let's uh, remove the WAD file I have. And here, if I remember correctly, I'm gonna say iWAD. Now you can obviously use the man file. All this is very listed in the, in the uh, man file. Um, but this is saying, don't just make a WAD file, make an iWAD file, meaning you don't need any other game WAD. So you don't need the original WAD, you don't need the Doom 1, Doom 2 WAD. You're making your own based on that. So I'm going to call this new game dot WAD. Okay. So now when I start PR Boom, instead of saying to load the Doom 1 WAD and then append to that the Doom 1 WAD or the 1 WAD that we created, I can just say PR Boom, I WAD, and I will say new wad and in this particular case I get the same results again it says Linux at the top there and the main title was different but basically I created a new game using all that art I don't have the right to create a game with all this art because it's all copyrighted unfortunately in a copyrighted way that's not open but again, something like the Freedom project, if you replace all the art and sounds and levels and all that, you can create your own iWAD game and lots of games have been made uh, using the Doom uh, game engine. Heretic was one. Uh, there were two versions of a Chex game for the Chex serial that was Doom based. And, uh, and you actually see code for that in the PR Boom uh, source code. Uh, so. That's the difference. If you're making a modification for the game, you're just going to create a regular WAD. If you're going to create a whole new game, you're going to create an iWAD. Now, again, even though when we created a WAD that appended to the game, it was still 12 megabyte, the size of the entire game. How can we get around that? Well, 
again, if we go into our file browser here, we have all these folders full of all different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight all those and delete them. Come into here, and I have everything sorted by modification date. I can shift delete. So the newest two that I did were at the end there. Okay, so we deleted all the non-essential things, anything that I didn't change. Going back to our shell here, if I try to package this now, like so, I'm going to get an error. Right away it's saying can't find level episode one, level one, wad. That's that's a level file. The reason for that is because we have, if we list out here, this wad info file. So if we uh, cat that out, or we'll dim into it, open it with a text editor, you can see it lists everything that it's going to try to package. Do text creates this when you export stuff from a wad file, and then it tries to repackage it all when you package it. So we have to remove from here what we don't we don't want, okay? Or we're not using. And there's more that we're not using than what we are using. So it might be easier to just delete the whole file and put in what we need. So if we come down here, we can search for graphics. And we can see that a area starts with the brackets in the title of the folder that it's supposed to be in. Anything with a pound symbol is a comment, so we don't even need those. So what we need is graphics and then the list of the um, artwork that the graphics that we have added. So let's quit out of that and let's just say echo nothing into the wad.txt. Now if we go back into that, you can see there's nothing in there. Let's add a line that says graphics and let's list what's inside our graphics folder. We got two files here and so let's go ahead and paste them in here each on their own line without their extension and in the original file things were all capitalized. I don't know if that matters. Uh, usually I capitalize it just to be sure, but let's try it without capitalizing it. So let's try running do text make wad one. And it looks like it completed successfully. If we list out now, instead of 12 megabytes, we have a 72K file, which is much, much better. Uh, so if you're only gonna be making a few changes, you just remove what you don't want. And let's just check to make sure that our wad file still works. Uh, so we're just going to say PR boom. Oh, well, again. Well, now we should be able to do it without telling it what Doom Wad we're going to do. So when I run this now, it's going to default to Doom 2 because I have that installed and that's what it defaults to. But I don't think we'll get that graphical editor. So we got our main title screen. We got Linux at the top there. If we go into here, yeah we don't get those blurry walls because the reason we got those blurry walls were because of some of the graphics that we were putting into that WAD file were not compatible and it doesn't matter they're not there anymore so this WAD file that we just created is compatible with both Doom 1 and Doom 2 and really any Doom based game because the things we put in there are the title and the title screen so it's always going to be the same are always going to be available Okay, and I think that will be it for this tour. We're going to look more at WAD files uh, next week. So I thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy this tutorial. Please visit filmedbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description, and as always, uh, have a great day. There's also, again, a link in the description to show notes, all the notes on all that we've gone over today, and some stuff for next week's video if you want to get ahead. So check out the links in the description. Thanks, and have a great day. This video is part of a series. I recommend watching the previous videos, especially the last one, because we're kind of reviewing some stuff here, but working with the video game Doom, and the first few videos we worked on the source code. Today we're looking at the WAD, uh, WAD file, which has a package, which is all the graphics and sounds and all that stuff. And um, 
last video. Hopefully this one's better than that. That was kind of late in the day. I was a little tired. Hopefully we do better with this one. The kind of review, I'm just going to go over some issues you might come up with, uh, come across when you're working with this. So I'm going to go kind of fast, but it's mostly review. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract my uh, Doom file, whatever Doom WAD file you have. So you're using Dutex, which you should have installed in the last video. I'm saying uh, dash Doom, because it's not Doom 2, it's a Doom 1 WAD. And I'm telling it where the WAD is, and I'm telling it to extract it. So now, if we look at this in the file manager, you can see we have a bunch of folders here uh, containing um, images and sounds and level data. data. And um, you can also see that we have a log file here and a WAD info file, which I talked about a little bit in the last video. We're going to look at that again this video. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the find command uh, and I'm going to find it with this and we want to edit a sky texture which I know is called sky so I'm going to find and look at all the files in the subfolders here for anyone that has the word sky in it and right here we can see under the patches folder we have one called sky one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up GIMP with that which is image uh, editing software and here we have the sky texture from the first uh, couple levels of Doom. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make some changes to it so we can quickly see some changes. So I'm going to say colorize, colors, colorize, hues, and I'm going to make a kind of a red color saturation up and probably turn up the contrast a little bit. There we go. So I can hit Control E or go to File Export and I'm just going to overwrite the file that already exists. Yes, overwrite. Raw when it asks. Come back in here now. What I can do is I can say do text dash make and I'll call my WAD file WAD1. I'll hit enter. It packages everything we extracted out from the original WAD file into a new WAD file. And again, there's iWAD files and then regular WAD files, which like the one we're creating now is supposed to be an add on to the original WAD file. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to run that. I'm going to run PR Boom. That's the version of Doom we're running. Tell it which iWAD we're using. Uh, so Doom 1. And again, this particular WAD we just created could be its own iWAD at this point. And then file and what WAD file we want to run. So go into here. And now if I run over to the window, instead of gray mountains, we have red mountains. Same if I go over this way. So we know that changing those work, changing that file. Let's do something else. I'm going to use GIMP again, and I've already downloaded a sky texture. So here's our sky texture, and you know what? It's a much larger res resolution than the original sky texture. The original sky texture is 256 by 128. This one is over 3000 by 1800. So why don't we just try to um, overwrite the file? We'll get a higher resolution uh, sky texture. So I'm going to say export as uh, and I'm going to go to where the file is which is under um, patches and it's called sky1 so there it is I'm going to say export replace raw export as it, when it asks and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to again tell well first we have to remove it won't override a WAD file that already exists, so I'll just delete the one we just created, and then I'll say do text dash make one WAD, and it's going to try here. You see, it's making patches. It'll take a while because this file is this one image file is probably larger than the original Doom WAD, but here we get an error. It's saying that the picture's height, and that's the one that we're working with. It says the name right there is greater than 509. Okay, so the textures can't be higher than 509, at least not this texture. So let's just go back in our image here, and we'll say scale image. We'll go to height and we'll say 509, scale, control E to export. And again, we'll try to make our WAD. Hey, it made it. So let's go ahead and run PR Boom and load up that WAD we just created. And if I go here, well, it changed the image, but we have a couple of issues. One, as you can see, it's not blue. It's actually kind of gray, all gray and white. And there's definitely a seam in the image. Let's work on the color portion. Well, yeah, let's work on the color portion of that. No, let's work on the seam first. Sorry, need to make up my mind. Well, one thing you might try is you might go, well, 
GIMP has a seamless feature built in. We'll go to filters and we'll go to map and we'll go to make seamless. And it just kind of just copied and pasted some stuff and made the image seamless. So I'll control E to export that. Again, we'll remove the WAD file that we've created and then we'll recreate it, repack everything. No errors. So now we will run PR boom and load up that WAD file. And let's see. Well, definitely changed it. It's not as drastic of a seam, but there's still a seam there. The reason for that is that the Doom WAD file has, if I go back into our file manager here, you'll see there's a folder called textures. And you might think that the image textures are in there, but when we go in there, there's just actually two text files. And if you look in here, it's just a text file that lists textures and then what they're made of, and it also has the offsets for them and heights and widths. So theoretically, you can go in here and adjust that image to be the new resolution. I have not tried that, but theoretically it should work. But what I'm just going to do, because it's not going to really make a difference in the quality of the image, because the sky texture is such a low quality anyway, is I'm going to copy our sky texture and just paste it over the sky texture we have. I can then resize it if I want, like so. I'm going to purposely leave some of the texture outside the bounds of the box. And what I'm going to do next, so we're scaling it down. Right now it's back, the image, if we save it, will be 256 by 128. But it's not seamless anymore because there are image portions that are outside of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Layer, and I'm going to go Layer to Image Scale, and that just trims off all the excess. Now I can go Filter, and I can go Map Seamless. Control E to export that. And if we go back into our shell here, we can again remove our wad, repackage our wad, and run our wad. And if we go here, there we go. We have a seamless texture now. So it's seamless, but we still have the issue of the colors. And the problem here is just Doom doesn't have the range of colors that are in this image, and they're so close that they're kind of just being all merged together. So. There's a few ways to fix this, but a quick and dirty way to do it is go into contrast here and just turn up the contrast a little bit. Control E to export that. And again, now we'll remove, repack, and run our wad. And if we go over here, we now have a blue sky. Looks kind of horrible, but that's just the image I'm using. You can touch it up a little bit, but there's how to fix those seamless uh, issues and the coloring issues if your images come up all gray. At least one way of fixing that issue. Okay, so another issue we have, again, if I list this out, you can see our WAD file here is 12 megabytes. And all we did was change one image. And as I mentioned in the last tutorial, we have this WAD info text. And if we open that up, you can see that it's a text file that lists the different categories and what files do text should repackage into the WAD file. Now we could erase everything out and type this by hand, but I've created a function that will take care of all of that for us. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, open up our file manager and I'm going to delete everything but um, patches and our do text log and our WAD text, our WAD info text. So I'll delete all that. And if I go into patches and search for sky, there's our sky file. I'm going to delete everything but that sky file. Now, if we go back here and we remove our wad one file, which it looks like I already did, if we, well, did I? Oh, right, when we just deleted everything, I did it. Um, if we try to make the wad file, it's going to give us an error saying there are files missing because we have to update the, the WAD info text. So again, as I said, I have a script that I wrote. Check out the description in the video for the link for the notes. And within that, there's this WAD pack function that I created. We'll just copy and paste that into our shell and hit enter. And now if I type in WAD pack and hit enter, you can see it outputs the folders, the category, and what file is available. 
So all we have to do is redirect that into our wad info text. So now if we cat out our wad info text, you can see it's just that. It's saying the category patches and skies. So now when we make our wad and we list it out, instead of being 12 megabytes, it's only 35 kilobytes. And we can now run our wad file just like we did before, but without all the excess, because all the graphics and stuff are still in the original IWAD file. Again, if you're going to be changing every graphic sound and everything, you'll be creating IWAD files. But if you're just making modifications for the original game, you're going to just create a WAD file and you just want in there what you've changed, in this case, just our sky texture. So, I hope that all made sense. There was a lot of info, went through it kind of fast, but a lot of it's repeat, and um, I hope you enjoy these tutorials. Next week, I think we're going to look at audio files. So, thanks for watching, and I hope that you have a great day. A series. The first uh, part of the series was looking at editing the source code and the binary files for uh, PR Boom, which is a, a port of Doom. And um, today we're going to be looking at uh, extracting wads. We're going to be reviewing stuff, so I suggest watching the previous videos. Hopefully, there's an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm in an empty folder here. If I run do text, which is our wad extractor and packer, and we tell it's dash doom because it's a doom one. I point it to the doom one wad. Uh, I can also point it to dash sounds and then extract. What we're doing here is in the previous videos, uh, we've been extracting the entire wad, but there's different categories. Once you extract, you see that there's different folders graphics, textures, levels, sounds. Here we're saying dash sounds to just extract the sounds. That way you don't have to extract the full WAD file. I'll show you the difference. So if I just extract, and I can say PC man here, or Pac-Man, whatever your file manager is, you can see that I have extracted all these folders and they have images in some of them, sounds in others. But if I was to delete all that, and run the same command, but with the dash sounds option. Now, open up my file manager here. You can see there's only one folder, and that's the folder containing the sounds. So we're going to edit a sound today. And there's lots of different sound software out there. Audacity is a um, very popular one. Uh, but I'm going with uh, WM Wave. Should be in your repositories if you're on a Debian-based system, at least. Um, it's not as full blown as Audacity is. And I like Audacity for um, track editing, lots of different tracks and stuff, mixing stuff. But if you're just doing a simple wave edit, I prefer this program. And another thing is Doom is very particular about uh, the, the bit rate and everything for the file. And when you use Audacity, it's you have a project and you have to, we would have to change all the settings to match what you need for Doom where if I use MH Wave Edit and I open up one of the audio files for Doom already, it already has those settings, so if I just replace that file and save it, uh, I don't have to worry about getting all the settings right. So I'm going to say open up, I'm going to go into the Sounds folder, uh, DS, uh, all the audio files start with that, I'm assuming that stands for Doom Sound, and I'm going to say pistol.au, those are the audio files, I'm going to say AU, we'll open that, and if I click play, Hopefully you can hear that. It's a gunshot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go open and I'm going to open up a file uh, that I already created and it's my voice saying bang. It's rather low so what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the audio of it a few times. I'm going to go effects and volume adjustment fade and I'm just going to set this to 400 at beginning and end. Apply it's a bit louder now. So here's the original 
gunshot sound. I'm going to select all that and just hit delete. And you can already see if you look at the top, the doom sound is an 8-bit sound at 1125 hertz, where this sound that I recorded uh, is at 16 bits and 440 and 100 hertz. So if I save this file now, it won't work in doom. But if I just take it and paste it over here, and then I can play it. And I can control S to save it. It warns me it's clipping, it's because I boosted the audio a lot, so it's clipping a little bit. It's all right for this. I'm gonna click OK. And then I can close both of those. Don't need to save the first one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do text make one wad. I'm just calling the wad one dot wad. And um, you can see some warnings here. These warnings are always here. One of the f audio files is at the uh, wrong rate, and it won't work on a previous version of Doom, but in PR Boom, it's going to work fine. And that's not the file we were editing anyway. So now I can use PR Boom to run our WAD file. And hopefully you'll hear when I click. Or if I shoot. you hear me saying bang instead of the actual gunshot. So hopefully you're picking that up in the um, video here. And um, so I'm just recording that sound with my microphone. But that is how you can edit sound in Doom. And I just thought I'd show you that because if you tried to save it in the wrong format, uh, it won't work. And uh, I find the easiest way is to use um, like I said, um, MH wave edit and just overwrite the file because again you could use Audacity but you'd have to change your project settings to all the right settings uh, for that. So that's it. I try to keep this one short and simple and as always I hope that you have a great day. Please visit my website filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description and as always I hope that you have a great day.